Welcome back to Bulgaria and welcome back to Bedin Vidin in our Football Manager 24 Build a Nation Save. Hello again guys, welcome back to another episode of our Build a Nation Save here in Bulgaria as the manager of Bidin Vidin. We are approximately two thirds of the way through the season uh, and we're here to find out how we've got on in the Champions League phase and see if we do progress to the next round and if we do, who we come up against. Uh, we obviously have the winter transfers to catch up on. I don't think there's been too many of them. We've also got the league to have a quick overview of to see exactly how we're getting on domestically. And then we'll get into uh, into the potentially the draw if, we, if we've qualified and a live com, depending on who we're going to come up against. So uh, we'll, let's get going. Right, guys, getting into how the league has gone. Uh, obviously, you, last time we were out, we uh, were away at Celtic Park and we picked up a 4-0 win to give our Champions League uh, league phase, which was fantastic. Next up, though, was a home game to Slavia Sofia, and it took a 91st minute penalty from Baba Campore uh, for us to secure even a point in this one. It was a very, very, very disappointing from a bidding point of view. We've played particularly poorly. We have rotated the squad, don't get me wrong, we've rotated the squad, uh, but still, it, it's a poor, poor result. Did beat Pod, uh, Botev Plovdiv away from home, though. Marimbo and uh, Baron with the goals 2 1 away from home. Fantastic performance. Again, we uh, we do have some players at Botev, but uh, it doesn't look like they've actually played in this game. Uh, they were they were the better team, believe it or not, uh, and it's took uh, it's took Fernando Baron uh, to secure the points for his man of the match performance with an assist and a goal, two key passes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a win. Do you know what? It, it, it's a win. Next time out, two 0 against Chernomorvana away from home. Fernando Baron and Papa Campore with the goals you may notice a slightly different formation in the bottom right as well just experimenting we've gone with five midfielders through at the back two up top uh, just like i said just experimenting guys and it's sort of it, it's it's working uh, you know i am sort of sticking to what i know which is the second yellow card tactic but uh, i can't stick with that forever uh, <laughs> so we're just trying new things and, and we did pick up the win we, you may have noticed it in the bottom match as well uh, we've kept uh, we've kept matthias perez fairly quiet which is obviously very important. Suleiman Sars there as well at Cherno Moore. Hildebrandt, of course, we know about, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's a good win. Uh, and the next one was even better. 7-0 uh, at home to Hibar. Christoph Danik, Marcus Vinicius, both with doubles. Arno, Mbarga and Baron. Again, they're using that new tactic. Unfortunately, for from, yes, yeah, great to get the three points, but the fact that we've scored seven past our own goalkeeper in Luis Felipe is, is maybe not... Uh, not good for his, his development, if he's going to develop. He's 25 years old now. He's never got anywhere near the potential that we, we thought he could have when we first signed him. We thought he was going to be an absolute you know, world-class goalkeeper, but uh, it's just never actually happened for Luis Felipe. So he's very much a lone farm player now. Hopefully he can improve. You can see he is kind of improving, but conceding seven goals in, in a single game is, is, not, is not good for that. 3-0 win away from home against... Arda Karjali, Stefan Ruznak and Fernando Baron with both the goals. Absolutely battered Arda. Really, really good performance. Rather uncomfortable win against Itar. It was 3-2 away from home. Marcus finishes Baba Campore from the penalty spot. And Milad Zawu from the penalty spot as well uh, to secure all three points. Disappointing to concede two goals to Itar. Mohamed Izak with one of them though is pleasing to see. Uh, nice to see him getting on the score sheet. He's having a, he is having a good season. Uh, only six goals in 17 appearances. 6.7 average rating but you know we don't mind that he's still only 20 years old he started, can still develop uh, hopefully he keeps getting better 3-3 three, three with Ludogretz in, in what was one hell of a game Marcus Vinicius and Fernando Baron with the goals uh, for Bedin 93rd minute equaliser from Ludogretz though but their goalkeepers had an absolute shocker Marcus Vinicius uh, has played particularly well in this one which was uh, which was good to see revenge against CSK 1948 and a 4-1 victory Christoph Danik Marcus Vinicius Fernando Braun and Albert Arnaud so we are spreading goals around the team which is again pleasing to see uh, they've had more shots than us uh, but uh, we're the ones who put the ball in the back of the net like I always say you know goals win games and uh, we, we've scored them 3-1 against Pirin Blagravad Lima Marcus Vinicius and Baba Campore with the goals uh, again, another good performance. Uh, and as things stand in the league table, guys, we are currently at the top by a single point. Uh, we do have Spartak Varna back up into third place. They, they finished quite high one season and then they've they've sort of in the doldrums for a couple of seasons. But they've sort of come back into it this season and find themselves just the seven points off top. We have played 
a game less than them though. A 6k, 1948, pushing us all the way, just that single point behind us, both on the same amount of games. Uh, so that that's pleasing to see. What is disappointing though is the fact that Levski and Ludogorets are down in a fifth and sixth. We need them because they are current European teams and they're the ones most likely to do the job for us. We need them back in the European spots so they continue growing in terms of European football. Uh, yeah, it's it's disappointing from their point of view. Uh, Botov is still up there. Ludogorets are quite some way off the pace, to be fair. But uh, Levski, I've just noticed, do have two games in hand over the teams ahead of them. Uh, but uh, yeah, Adekar Jali at the bottom of the table now. Chernomor Varna. So Itar, Hibar and Piran Blagravad are actually doing pretty well. In terms of goal scorers, uh, Fernando Baron is currently in fourth place with 13 from 15. Matthias Perez, 13 from 20. So two of our strikers there in the top four. Max Vinicius is not just not too far behind. Klimis is up there with 9-18, which is, is good to see. He's having a great season as far as Barrow are concerned. And now moving on to how the Champions League went. Uh, of course, opened up with a 4-0 win away at Celtic. 3-1 win in the next game at home to Dinamo Zagreb. Toninio Guerrero, Nenad Subic and Arturo Marimbio with the goals. Fantastic performance from Bidin. Unfortunately, a trip to the Estadio de Luz in Benfica, uh, Benfica in Portugal uh, was, uh, was a 2-0 defeat. Uh, we didn't really turn up for the game. The only one who has is Ivan Tosic, who is a, a very much a fringe player, possibly suffering from some injury suspensions in this one, maybe just a bit of rotation. Uh, it was disappointing, but uh, Benfica deserved their win. Big result against Arsenal, though. Like, this is one that I earmarked at the start of the season that we would uh, not get anything from. And considering that we've had Marcus Vinicius sent off in the 65th minute as well, we've not registered a single shot on target. Arsenal have only hit the target twice themselves, but Adam Papp has picked up the man of the match performance. It's, uh, it's a very, very good result against Arsenal. And we followed that up with an even better one. 3-1 uh, win over Roma. Baron, Ali Marungu and Marimbio with the goals. You may notice that Marimbio has possibly become more of my starter than uh, Marcus Vinicius has. Uh, he's played, uh, he's probably played a lot more games and he, he performs better than Marcus Vinicius does, which is why he's getting the game time. But a, a fantastic 3-1 win over Roma. Olympiakos were next away in Greece and it was Milad Zawi and Albert Arnaud with the goals. That was after Shimas gave Olympiakos uh, an equaliser just after half time. Fairly even game considering that year mark. This is one that we should comfortably win. It was a lot closer than I would have liked. Uh, I certainly thought that Roma was one that we'd struggle in and this one would be easy. It looks like the Roma one was a bit easier than this one was. Uh, but yeah, it's another three points. 2-2. Two -two with Dortmund uh, from the Bidin Stadium, believe it or not. Uh, we weren't at Venets for this one. Bidin Stadium, in terms of European football, it is back on the calendar in a, in a limited capacity. You can actually see the uh, the construction works going on in the background uh, when we're in the live comms. Uh, but James Ali Marungu uh, with, uh, with the man of the match, also a goal. Fernando Baron took a 90-second minute equaliser. In fact, it took two late goals from a Dortmund point of view for them to rescue a point, which just shows you how much we've progressed because they did beat us comfortably uh, previously when we've played them uh, but it took them to rescue the game late on this time round and we then had the one that I was fearing and that was the the away trip to Santiago Bernabal Shaquille Van Persie and Albert Koulibaly with the goals for Real Madrid but Baba Cambiore, Milad Jaoui and Fernando Baron we were actually in the lead at 3-2 coming into the final 15 minutes of the game uh, it took that Koulibaly equalised in the 77th minute it was wasn't as one-sided as I thought it was going to be uh, to be honest yes they've had more shots we've had more of the ball though uh, it's a good good performance unfortunately though we needed a win in the Bernabeu uh, to go straight into the round of 16 we actually finished in 10th position in the table which is still very very respectable 15 points picked up only losing one of our eight games that uh, is fantastic in terms of the nation that we're trying to chase down at the minute, which is the Netherlands, uh, we we've had uh, you know we've had a good season in terms of that. Fe Feyenoord miss out, Club Bruges miss out as well. Belgium they're just ahead of us. Galatasaray miss out. Uh, Le unfortunately, Levski Sofia only picked up two points, which is is very very disappointing from a from a bidding point of view. The other team that did get through though was Ajax. They're just the two points behind us. Uh, so yeah. Six and two threes as to whether we've had uh, you know the better time of it than 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 uh, the Netherlands have. Arguably, you'd say the Netherlands do because Feyenoord picked up five more points than Levski, whereas we've only picked up two more than Ajax. You know that could be the uh, 
could be the decider there, but it's still it's fantastic for us to get through. Again, we, we're now becoming perennial knockout uh, knockout round team in the in the Champions League. It's not been uh, it's not been too busy. We you can see that we've been raiding Brazil. Uh, we did spend 10.75 million though on Adio uh, Gavio. He's another striker, uh, young Brazilian with bags and bags and bags of potential. He's driven as a as a personality. Uh, brought in for the minute to be a lone farm player, 18 years old. But with that much potential, uh, he has definitely got, uh, you know, he's got the opportunity to become a first team player in future. He's wanted on loan by Locomotive Plovdiv as well, which will be absolutely ideal for him. He did cost us a lot of money. He's on a lot of wages as well. Coming as a future prospect, paying 12.25k per week to, which is, which is a lot. But uh, I am hoping that he can go out on loan earn some match experience, become the player we need him to be. Uh, and there's three more. That's Claudio de Oliveira. Again, another lone farm player, 18 years old. He's currently unhappy because we left him out of the Champions League squad. Uh, he's not Champions League ready. Uh, so he wasn't going in the Champions League squad. Uh, Noel is another one who's wanted on loan. 22-year-old Brazilian. Does have po uh, Polish nationality as well. So he is an EU national, which is very, very helpful. Uh, defensive midfielder. Again, we've got him in as a lone farm player, uh, really. And then Silva is is the final one. Uh, again, wanted on loan by Spartak Varna. Paid 1.3 million for him. Can play as a winger. Obviously, we don't use wingers in our system, but a lot of the other teams do, which is why we have, uh, in fact, signed him to send him straight out on loan. In terms of outs, there's not really been any. They're all loan players. Uh, they've all gone out on loan. Uh, obviously, we sold August Prisk in the summer, but uh, all these players, they've gone out on loan uh, to various clubs around Bulgaria. Jonathan is is definitely one who is is one for the future. He's uh, he's got three and ten though so far this season for Hebar. But obviously we know that Hebar are newly promoted. They are going to struggle near the bottom of the league. But uh, yeah, just all loan players, guys. We're not really in the need to shift any players on financially. We've only got eight point three million pounds in the bank at the minute because that but that's because we're spending ten million pounds on on eighteen year old Brazilians. You know. Uh, so we are spending a lot of money, but in terms of Champions League money, we are bringing that money back in as well, which is it was huge. We're under the wage budget as well, which of course is very, very good. And that does lead us to this, guys. Of course, is the draw for the knockout playoff round. Uh, we are in the draw. Uh, let's go and uh, let's go and view the draw and see who we're going to be drawn against this season. Let's start the draw. We've sped it up, obviously. Uh, we are a seeded team, so we get the first leg away from home. First out, the hat is Ajax. Fernando Torres with the draw again. Uh, Ajax get Dortmund. So, come on, Dortmund. Do us a favour. Knock the Dutch out. Next out, Real Sociedad. They are at home to Bayern Munich. I wish these draws went a bit quicker. They're a bit, uh, they're a bit slow. From my point of view, yes, I could go and click the advance button to get it out. Slavia Prague, this would be a good one for us if we could get Slavia Prague. They got Arsenal. Uh, you, you'd expect Arsenal to get that through that one uh, quite comfortably. Uh, I, I don't really fancy any of the teams that are left, particularly PSG. PSG get Porto. I think I'd probably... Lille or Valencia would be the two that I'd, uh, I'd most like here. We've been thumped by Marseille in the past before. It is Lille next, though. They are going to get Tottenham. Tottenham away in France for the first leg. So it's Bayer Leverkusen, Marseille or Valencia uh, for Bedin. Next out is Bayer Leverkusen. Xavi Alonso is still there. Uh, we get Bayer Leverkusen. We get Bayer Leverkusen. Let's just uh, let's skip that to the end now and we'll have a look at the full draw. Uh, so it's Valencia against Napoli, Marseille against Atletico Madrid. I'm sure we've played Bayer Leverkusen before. Indeed, we have. Uh, did they knock us out one season? Possibly. Uh, with just 1 1 each in terms of the head to head. Xavi Alonso, like I say, still the manager. Uh, yeah. That's going to be quite difficult, isn't it, against Bayer Leverkusen? That game is in about a week's time, guys. So we are going to. Uh, I'm still in the, you know, I'm still in the, uh, the the winter break, as you can see. We've still got friendlies uh, to work through. I'm going to go and work through those now, and we'll come back and we'll take on both the legs against Bayer Leverkusen. Hopefully, we can knock them out and get through to the round of 16 again. Right, guys, here we are. First leg against Bayer Leverkusen. The first leg is away in Germany. Now we did have a league game scheduled before this 
uh, before this game. Unfortunately, it was postponed due to a waterlog pitch against Lokomotiv Plovdiv, I believe it was. So this is our first competitive game uh, after the winter break. Uh, so we are going to be a little bit rusty. We do have the match fitness up, though. We have obviously done those friendlies, and I've tried to play the strongest team possible in those friendlies. You can see just how many of our players are wanted by other teams, though. Uh, but this is the lineup that we're going to take to Germany with us. It's going to be Pap in goal. You know, fantastic player still. Still does the job for us. Centre-halves, Tonino Guerrero. Still a very, very important player for us. Avramovic in the middle. Not maybe not quite up to, to the standards that we that we need doesn't like big matches either which is is a little bit of concern center half is is definitely an area that we do need to improve Ariel on the other side is still a decent player unfortunately he's a little bit short for a center half which is which is not great uh, he, he can obviously play as that wing back and he's okay there as well would I put him there over Subic possibly not uh, if we can somehow recoup some of the 10.5 million pounds that we spent on him I possibly let him go uh, Lima on the right still a very very good player for us at Lima 25 years old cannot be too far away now from a gain in possible Bulgarian nationality that would ease up a, a free up a, a foreign spot for me uh, Zawui in the middle fantastic player for us star FBET league player does occasionally flick to world class depending on uh, yeah, on the well I don't know what it depends on really but he does occasionally flick to world class £245,000 we pay for him He's, he's valued way more than that, but he's another one who I'm determined not to let leave. On the left-hand side is Subic. Like I said, we can definitely, definitely improve on Subic. Uh, 140 appearances for the club, though, and he's never let me down yet. Into the mid uh, midfield, Campaiore is another one who's an absolutely fantastic player. 23-year-old. I did look this up. I, I've mentioned it before. Birkenabi, I think that's how you pronounce that. Again, he's another one who's close to possibly picking up Bulgarian nationality. Ali Marungu has already done that. He is a world-class player in our squad. Still wanted, though. It's Man United at the minute, as well as Atleti Madrid and, of course, Saudi Arabia. But uh, he, he, we've got him tied down on a contract till 2040. So absolutely determined not to let him leave. Fernando Baron, our world-class striker, also wanted by Saudi Arabia. Again, don't want to let him leave. <laughs> don't want to let him leave. Uh, and then today we're going to go with Marambio up top, the 21-year-old Chilean uh, who's had a good start to life here in Bulgaria. So we come out onto the pitch in our knockout playoff round. We're hoping that we can do the business against uh, against uh, Bayer Leverkusen. I forgot who we were playing there for a minute. Against Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, we, we desperately, desperately need to get past the round of 16 and into the quarterfinals. This Tino Livramento, though, with the throw in, and he's fed it into the penalty area. If that's a penalty, <sighs> there's there's no way, no way how that is a penalty. <sighs> Mossman to take the penalty. Can Adam Pap uh, dish out some justice, really? No. So, yet again in the Champions League, we're behind to a dubious penalty. I do need to do the faces as well. You may have noticed there that Mossman's uh, regen face or new gen face uh, hasn't been updated yet. I, I kind of do it every couple of seasons. Uh, so it, obviously I haven't done it this season. So I do need to do that. That's uh, that's disappointing to be behind already though. And that is the way it stays till half time. Just that single goal from the penalty spot. We are the better team so far though. Uh, we need to obviously capitalise on that. Right, with an hour on the clock guys, it's been a, a very, very quiet game. We've only had that one highlight so far and that was the penalty. I've made a quick change up top. I've brought Marcus Vinicius on for Marembio. Moved Baron across to the advanced forward. Uh, Marcus Vinicius becomes the complete forward. Uh, we, we desperately would like to get a goal out of this game. Something to take back to Bulgaria with us. And this could be the opportunity. It's Lima finding Marcus Vinicius, the Brazilian. Turns nicely away from the defender. Run out of places to go though. Keeps the ball. Finds Campaiori. Comes back to Ariel. Ariel forward into Campaiori again. Uh, running to, sort of into a dead end here. Finds Subic. Comes back to Ariel again. Ariel into Campaiori. Can we find that killer ball? No, he's tackled by Essel who goes long. But it's easy for Tonino Guerrero. Finds Zawi. Misses it. Campaiori. Good ball forward towards Subic. Inside the area. Subic pulls it back for Marcus Vinicius. Gets his 13th of the season. 
and we pull level in Germany. Can we go one better though? Avramovic finds Ariel. Ariel forward towards Subic. Subic to Zaui. Subic again. Campaiore turns. Zaui strides forward. Picks out the pass to Ali Marungu, who's in, and he gives us the lead. It's been such a quiet game. And then in the last couple of minutes, Bedin have come alive. And that is a fantastic win for Bedin. Away from home uh, to Bayer Leverkusen. We've got, obviously got the home leg to come in Bulgaria, though. Well, hopefully we can uh, maintain our lead. Right, I do have Lokomotiv Plovdiv to play in between. Uh, so I'm going to go away do that. Now we'll come back and take on the second leg, where we'll hopefully we make it into the round of 16 again. Right, guys, welcome back. We do have the second leg against Bayer Leverkusen to come. We did have Lokomotiv Plovdiv in the league in between, and Stefan Ruznak and Fernando Baron with the goals for us. So moving into that second leg, we do have a 2-1 lead on aggregate. And a couple of changes to the lineup. We move Tineo Guerrero out. We bring Slobodan Rengel in. Uh, still a very, very good player. Has recently been unhappy with the amount of first team football. Uh, but uh, So he has got a start. Uh, and he's just recently, in the last two days, come out and said that he's happy to stay at the club. Uh, the other player that we're going to start is Rusnak. He did get a start in that last game. As I've already mentioned, we are trying to... Uh, I don't know whether this will overturn. I'd like to keep him with that much potential. Uh, so, yeah, I'd like to keep him. Um, so we are trying to play him as much as we possibly can. But that's the lineup for today. Hopefully we can complete the job against Bayer Leverkusen. So as we get the game underway, uh, Ajax did get knocked out, by the way, by Dortmund, which is absolutely fantastic uh, from, from our point of view. Uh, so if we can get further, that's big coefficient point gains over the Netherlands. Uh, which, which we're going to get. We, obviously, we need to keep an eye on what Turkey and Belgium are doing. First highlight of the game, though, is Bidin on the ball. Ball into Zawi, forward towards Beron. Coming deep to get the ball. Feeds it to the right, and Lima goes into the penalty area. Good run from the Argentine. Oh, he leaves it for Rusnak. The little dummy by Beron there, and Rusnak puts the ball in the net. Right, second highlight of the game. Uh, you can see the uh, construction works going on in the background. Subic pinches that from the Leverkusen defence. Feeds it into Rusnak. Surely that's a penalty. If the ones against us are penalties, that's a penalty. Uh, but you can see the construction works going on in the background. Somehow, though, we're still at 9,943 fans inside the stadium, despite having two stands that are completely under construction. So I, I don't understand that. But we do get the penalty. It's going to be uh, Babi Campore to take it. Number 53 steps up, sends the keeper the wrong way. 2-0 to bid in, 4-1 on aggregate. And at half-time, guys, we are in absolute cruise control here against Bayer Leverkusen. It's absolutely fantastic the way that we're playing. Uh, obviously, Leverkusen, I think they, they beat us quite heavily uh, in previous seasons. I, I really can't remember uh, the, the time that did beat us. Uh, but uh, yeah, great, great performance so far from bid in. They are trying to get back into the game, though, and it's Kra with the deep free kick. Headed clear, though. Baron picks it up. He's got some open grass to run into. Gives it to Rusnak. Look at the blue shirt striding forward. Rusnak... Feeds it to the right and Lima, a little bit slow. And it's given the black shirts of Leverkusen time to get back. The end, we end up with the effort, though. It's Rusnak. Campaiori is absolutely blazed. In fact, we've got three stands under construction. So all 9,900 people are crammed into one stand somehow. Somehow. <laughs> I don't understand how that works. But uh, into the final 10 minutes and Padin are cruising towards the last 16 of the Champions League again. Here's Tino Levermento, though. Finds a roll into Mossman. Scored the goal in the first leg. Newhouser. Newhouser takes it past. Lima has the effort. Forces the save from Adam Papp. He's going to go for a corner for Bayer Leverkusen, which Ben Adepto is going to take left-footed deep. Papp punches clear. Only as far as Fraulo. Fraulo, Campaiori for company. Fraulo still with the ball. Campaiori's done well to track him back. Forced him inside. Ali Marunga cuts out the pass. Gets the second one. The referee's given a free kick, though. Uh, against Ali Marungu, but good desire from the bidding players. It's Edi Bendietto, uh, Benedetto to take the free kick. Goes for goal. Pap read it well, pushes it behind for another corner, which Fraulo is going to take for Leverkusen. A little bit of a uh, little spell of uh, pressure from a Leverkusen point of view late in this game. They do get the header, it's hit the outside of the post, and gone behind for a goal kick. Uh, and we are into the dying embers now, but it's Aberon standing over this free kick. Will he go for goal from here? I think he will, and it's uh, it's clipped the outside of the post 
from that free kick from Fernando Baron. Tottenham beaten Lille 5-0 in the other game happening today. Rusnak finds Campayore. Campayore back to Rusnak. Rusnak is absolutely mullered by Newhouse. Uh, Newhouse is going to get himself sent off, is he? He does indeed. In the 93rd minute, uh, Hans Joachim Newhouse gets sent off. That's an absolutely needless challenge. The 4-1 down on aggregate. I think it's just born out of frustration. Hopefully it hasn't injured Rusnak. But Lima picks up the man of the match performance. That's £8.2 million in the bank though, guys, which is huge. Obviously, we're down to £8 million as things were. We're back up to that 15.3. Uh, we're going to do the draw for the next round. So I'm just going to get to the point where we do the draw and we'll see who we're going to face in the next episode. And here we are, guys, at the draw. At Champions League round of 16 draw. Obviously, there's a few teams left in here. We are currently unseeded. Obviously, having come through the knockouts, let's just whack the speed up to max and see who we're going to get. Uh, I've clicked the wrong button. First out, though, is Napoli. They are going to be at home in the first leg, too. I think, ideally, here, we want Copenhagen, don't we, for, uh, for us. It's Napoli against Barcelona. Next out, we have... Kylian Mbappe, the ceremony host, this time. It's Raul Sociedad. And they are going to be taking on... Real Madrid, an all-Spanish round of 16 tie there. Next up is Tottenham. We'd preferably like to try and avoid the English teams at this point. Tottenham will face FC Copenhagen. That's the one that we wanted. That means we're going to get a very, very difficult tie in the round of 16. Next up is Arsenal. At least we avoid Arsenal. Can we get Juventus and get revenge on Juventus for last season? That would be good, wouldn't it? Uh, no, we can't because Arsenal have got Juventus. Next up, we have... Marseille. Marseille are drawn at home to Liverpool. Marseille against Liverpool. So who have we got left then that we could possibly face? It's PSG next out. They're going to get Man City, Man United or Milan. They get Man City. So we're left with Man United or AC Milan for Bedin. <laughs> Which is fantastic. Here is Bedin. Who do we get? I think I'd take Milan over Man United. No, <laughs> it's a repeat of a couple of seasons ago. So that leaves Dortmund against Milan, which means we do get Man United. They've beaten us three times in the history in our history so far, which is uh, which is great. We're really going to have to be on our game if we're going to get any if we're going to get past Man United, shall we say? Or is it going to be? Round of 16 is uh, is pretty much our level at the minute. Of course, the first leg is at the uh, the Bidin Stadium. Uh, it's not too far away, I believe. It's um, it's three games away. It's going to be next episode, though, guys. It's it's about a week away, uh, as far as things are concerned. Uh, but that's going to be it for today. Thank you very much, as always, for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully, we can get past Man United. We need to at least progress past the round of 16 at some point soon like i say it seems to be our level uh, at, at, as things stand but we are we are becoming a better team we're, we're much much better than we have been in previous seasons uh, guys thank you very much and i'll see you all in the next episode